Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Lauren and today let's talk dress forms. Body doubles or dress forms have many different names. The difference between a mannequin and a dress form is a mannequin is what you would see in the store that clothing is displayed on. There's not many adjustments that can be made. They're just there to show you the clothing. A dressmaker's dummy or a body double is something you are going to be able to use for dressmaking. You can get them in different styles. You can get them by size. So if you are size 12, you would buy a size 12 body form. By saying that, it might not be your size 12, but it's the industry size 12. Those particular body forms have a couple of features. They are more pinnable than the adjustable ones because they're all one piece. They are a heavier form core. There's plates inside that you can't see that when you push, the shoulder collapses. That way you're able to get the clothing item on and then you click it and the shoulders pop back out. That is about the only adjustment that you get on that style. This style, it is adjustable. And having it adjustable, it is a little bit different. It's hollow inside and they have all of these pieces on a hard plastic with this very thin nylon fabric over top of it. You can pin through this fabric, but it's not pinnable as in a pin cushion. The bonus to this is you can adjust it. If you're going to buy one, do not buy one larger than your measurements because you can't make them smaller. You can get these many different sizes and they'll go from one size to another in little blocks depending on the company that you're going with. You'll be able to pad or adjust the body doubles. The body doubles can come in four parts or eight parts. A four part is you have four parts that you're able to adjust. The eight part means you have more adjustments and you will have more adjustments in the waist so you can put that waist up or put that waist down and even bend that waist a little bit if you have a bit of a sway back. And the adjustment knobs will also depend on if you have a four or an eight part. The eight part gives you more adjustments which will give you a better fit. You can also get them in leg models and what that means is the post that sits in the center can be moved to one side and that way I'm able to put on a pair of pants and have this fit on pants. If you have one with just the one post in the middle you cannot use it for pants. You can only use it for dresses, skirts, and tops. You can also get them instead of on a stand that they hang from the top. The ones that hang on the top you can get full bodies right up to the ankles. So keep in mind these features when you're looking for a body dump. This particular model is called a Justo form and it comes in many different styles. Men's, children's, and different sizes for women. This one is a small because I'm going to need to make it bigger. You can get medium, large, and some of them even come in extra large. So how do we adjust these to fit us? The first thing we need to do is take our own measurements. We have the standard measurement, the bust, the waist, the hips, but the more measurements you do, the better it is to fit your form. I like to take measurements two different ways. I like to measure, but I also like to measure with ribbon. So this is a ribbon that is not going to stretch. And I'm going to take that measurement and I'm going to put them on myself mark my measurements right onto this piece of ribbon. On the ribbon, I'm going to be able to put the area that the measurement is from and its size. One measurement I like to do above the bust, one below, then of course the bust, the waist, the hips. Another measurement I'm going to do is my neck. Another measurement is to go from the shoulders to the bust line and I'm going to use these ribbons to adjust the body double. But the first thing I want to do is put an undergarment on the dress form. So if you're doing this for a man or a child, you can skip this step. By putting your favorite style of bra on the body double, you're going to be able to adjust the body double better. And you're going to be able to see that it looks more like you. And when you do get to fit the clothing 
and the patterns on it, it's going to be a more true fit because we are wearing our clothes over top of whatever garments we want underneath. So if you have an old bra, this is the time to use it. Some adjustments will have this round knob on it. You're going to squeeze, push, and turn. This just has a rolling feature on it, so you're going to be able to roll it. I'm going to adjust the top first and the bottom second because the bottom is sitting underneath, so I'm going to do that first. It's a lot easier if you adjust all of them as you go along. I'm going to be able to adjust these a little bit in the center. Then I'm going to be able to take the sides and I'm going to adjust both of the sides a little bit at a time. So what's going to happen is this area is going to open up and just continue doing it until you get the measurement that matches your ribbon. As I adjust the body, I'm also going to keep in mind the neck. You might need to adjust the neck and the sides all at the same time. And pin the ribbons on. They don't have to be exact because when you finish adjusting the entire body, you're going to be able to make small adjustments. Because this is an eight part dress form, I'm going to be able to adjust this area here. So if I have a longer torso, I'm going to be able to make that adjustment. And I'm going to be able to do my hip adjustment. On the adjustments, there are numbers. Those are measurements. So if you have a 35 measurement in one, try to keep them all at the 35 measurement and that way the body double is equal on both sides. If you have a 35 here and a 34 on the other side, this side is going to be a little bit smaller than this side. Now if that is how your body is shaped, then you can leave it. Another measurement you're going to need is from the back of the neck down to your natural waist. When you fold in half, where that bend is, is your waist. We don't normally wear our pants right on the waist, but that's the measurement you need. That back waist measurement is going to help you adjust this. Now this form, you can just pull it apart to make this waist longer. You can adjust this if your back is going back, which means your front will come up a little bit more. So this manual adjustment you're going to be able to get so it suits your body. Use these ribbons and leave them on the body double as you adjust all the measurements. As you adjust one, the other one might become slightly off, so you might have to readjust it. It's going to be a little bit of maneuvering. You adjust one, adjust the other. Just do it slowly as you adjust everything. You might have some measurements that you're not going to be able to accomplish by turning the knobs, so I'm going to have to pad it. I'm also going to have to pad in some area here where I have some space. The other thing you need to check is your shoulder. Do you have a square shoulder, a shoulder that slants down, and how big is your shoulder? You can adjust the body double on a tabletop, put it on the leg after, or put it on the leg, then adjust it. This particular model comes with a marker that this is going to spin around and I'm able to use this line and mark my skirts. So I'm going to put the legs on and put this body double to my height. To check to make sure it's the same height, you can take a ruler and put it on your shoulder and the body double shoulder. And this should be straight. Do the same thing for your waist. Put the ruler where your waist is and see if it matches the body double. I have all the adjustments that I can do with the knobs. Now I'm going to be able to pad it where I need it to be padded. There are many different things that you can use to pad the form. Shoulder pads work great and also different types of quilt batting. I prefer to use a batting that is very thin and build up the layers versus having something very big and puffy. This puffiness can be condensed down so you'll never really know the true size. So it's better to have something firm. And the tape is going to be able to help you adjust and fill in all the spots that you need. If your back is more curved, you need to keep that in mind so that you can add a little bit of padding along the back. And now, start to add the padding. Stand in the mirror, see where you need the padding, and Keep adding until you can look in the mirror and it looks to be about right. 
your eye is pretty accurate as to what you need. You can even take the batting that you're going to use and put it on yourself and kind of duplicate that shape. And it's best if you build up from a small layer going larger so that the bottom layer is going to be smaller, then the next piece is going to be a little bit bigger, the next piece is going to be bigger, and that's always going to give you a very smooth surface when you come to the ends. When you've finished padding her, you can take off some of the ribbon. Now that we have it all padded and it looks like us, we need to put a cover on it. You need to have something very, very thin because you don't want to add any more size to the body double. I like to start with a very thin stretch knit fabric and I'll make a tube that's going to fit all the way around. This is very slippery and very stretchy. It's exactly what I want. So I've taken a big piece and I've stitched a seam down the center. Put that tube of fabric wrong side over top of the body double. Have that seam go right down the back. Hold it up and pin where your shoulders are going to be. Pin so that it's tight in the back. You want to pin the entire thing so it's nice and tight but still giving you a shape. Once you have this shape all pinned, we need to draw a little bit of a neckline. We're going to make a turtleneck out of this so that we can finish the edge off. You don't have to be really fussy about it. I'm just going to draw where my neck is going to be, front and back. So where you've done the pinning, trim off all the seam allowances, and then cut that neck shape out. So I have very round shoulders and a little area here where the neck is going to be. We're going to turn that neckline into a turtleneck and that's going to cover the top and give a nice clean finish. We're going to also turn it into a pin cushion. You will need that measurement so that measurement around the neck will need to be up at the top and you can make it a little shorter by about two inches because you want it nice and tight. You can go anywhere between seven to ten inches long and join the raw edges and stitch down so you're going to make the tube. Match up those right sides and stitch that tube onto that neckline that you cut out. You can stretch it until it fits. So once I have this all tightened, the shoulders are done, and I have that neck on, I'm going to be able to turn this top portion into a pin cushion. Now mine does have a little pin cushion in here, but I want to turn the whole thing into a pin cushion. And that's why I have this nice long neck. We need to put something here to use as a pin cushion. You can use many different things to turn this top into a pin cushion. You can use kitchen sponges, you can use foam, or you can use quilt batting. I have a couple of layers of foam and I'm just going to copy that shape. Bring your turtleneck up. I'm going to take all of the extra fabric, pull it right to the back, and this is going to be the stitching line I'm going to use to hold this all in. I now can put the cover on. I'm going to pull it nice and tight and as I go around I'm going to smooth out any of the batting so that it's all nice and smooth. This nice tight cover is going to hold it all together. For the bottom of the cover I've just cut it straight. That way if I need to go in and adjust this I can. A dress form can save you a lot of time in your sewing room. You're going to be able to match up the tissue paper whenever you need it and you're going to be able to see how the garment is going to look on you. It does take a little work to adjust it and to pad it, but once it's done, it is going to be one of your best friends in your sewing room. Thank you for joining me today on Sew Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe, and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.